Portugal is a little country that borders the Iberian Peninsula's Atlantic coast. Hey Siri, it is one of the most How many days of sunshine does Portugal get in a year? Portugal gets an average of 300 days of sunshine a year. Obviously, expecting the weather to cooperate during my visit, despite there being an average of 300 days of sunshine, was wishful thinking. It's not an end of the world type problem, but I had really built up this excitement and expectation within myself for this trip. This was my chance to travel and explore while also painting these bucket list destinations I was seeing and experiencing. Who knows if I will ever have that opportunity again for these places. But let's back up to the beginning. So picture this, it's 2021 and my husband and I are celebrating our second anniversary by flying off to Portugal. I mean, what better way to celebrate than by getting lost in a foreign country, am I right? We were in awe of the stunning buildings, the vibrant culture, and of course the food. Don't even get me started on the food. It was also on this trip that something pretty cool happened. I made my first sticker sale. That moment was a game changer for me. It was like the universe saying, hey, you might actually be able to do this art thing. So Portugal will always hold a special place in my heart. But let me tell you, navigating a foreign country can be a real challenge. Because of the language barrier, bad scheduling, and having little to no experience with public transport, we may have missed out on one of the best places to visit, the Castelo de São Jorge, or the Castle of St. George. But hey, who says we can't create our own second chances? Skip ahead a year and my husband and I are itching to get away and travel again. Somehow we find ourselves on another seven hour flight to Portugal and this time I packed my paintbrushes. This is the castle of St. George. It sits on a hill in the heart of Lisbon giving you some of the most amazing views of the city and the Tagus River. But what struck me while visiting this castle is that it has been standing here for over a thousand years. This place has history seeping out of its stone walls. As a kid, a lot of my favorite stories, books, and movies happened in castles. To be able to explore the towers and ramparts of a place where my childhood imagination spent so much time is surreal. Some other highlights while visiting here was this archeological site where you can see the ruins of a Moorish neighborhood and this peaceful courtyard where you can chill out and enjoy the gardens, fountains, and mosaic tiled benches. It's also the hangout spot for quite a lot of peacocks. The first known written record about this fortification dates all the way back to 985 AD. So I finally finished my sketch and then came the hard part, to paint or not to paint. As the sun began to set, my growling stomach won the battle and I ditched the paintbrushes for some Portuguese delicacies. Little did I know that I was saying goodbye to the last day of sunshine on our trip and therefore my last opportunity for plein air painting. Although painting on location would have been an exciting experience, I appreciated the comforts that came with finishing my paintings back in my cozy Tennessee apartment. I didn't have to worry about raindrops or taking time away from other trip plans, but instead I was able to relax and not rush through the process. While I wouldn't call myself a beginner, I don't have any formal training or years of experience and practice past drawing back in middle and high school. As a result, I tend to be slow and cautious with my paints. This is especially evident in this first painting, where I used many layers to build up color and contrast. I'm not sure how many layers of green I added to that grass. I did, however, try to save you from boredom by editing out all the pauses I made while trying to make decisions. This first painting ended up teaching me a lot, and I feel like you can actually compare the last painting I do to this one and see the growth. The level of confidence and comfort you have with a medium and style can greatly influence the quality of your art. On day two of our trip, my husband and I were greeted with a dreary and overcast sky. But hey, we weren't about to let some clouds rain on our parade. Metaphorically, at least. Armed with our umbrellas, we made our way to the train station, ready for our next adventure in one of Portugal's most enchanting destinations. 
Located just 30 minutes outside of Lisbon, Sintra is a charming town that feels like it's from another time. The town is nestled in the hills of the Sintra Mountains and it is surrounded by dense forests and lush greenery. It's been a popular destination for centuries, with Portuguese royals and nobility building summer homes and estates here to escape the heat of the city. Today, Sintra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, like the Great Wall of China and the Pyramids of Giza. We decided that Sintra's fairytale-like atmosphere and many castles, palaces, and gardens were worth at least two visits. During our first trip to Portugal in 2021, we visited two of Sintra's castles. We hopped on a bus to take us to the top of the mountain peaks where the Castelo dos Moros sits, which was an experience in and of itself. Picture a huge bus climbing a hill on a small, steep, winding, wet road. It's not for everyone. But the castle was not to be missed. It was built in the 9th century by the Moors and offers stunning views of the town and surrounding hills. As we explored, we learned that the castle played an important role in the Reconquista, a series of battles that took place in medieval Spain and Portugal. The castle fell into disrepair over the years, but underwent restoration in the early 20th century and is now a popular tourist attraction. Its historical significance is a testament to the enduring impact of the Reconquista on the culture and religion of the region, inspiring countless works of art, literature, and architecture. Then we made our way to a second hilltop where we explored Pena Palace. This palace was originally a monastery in the Middle Ages, but King Ferdinand II, also called the Artist King, decided to spice things up with a colorful new look. The palace is a stunning example of Romanticism architecture, which is basically a fancy way of saying it's all about individuality and imagination. You can see that in the palace's bold colors, intricate ornamentation, and irregular shape. Plus, the use of natural elements like rock formations and trees in the design really shows off the romantic love for nature. It's like a fairy tale come to life, but with way more stairs to climb. After visiting those two stunning places, it's no wonder that we decided to head back to Sintra on our 2022 trip. So we grabbed a pastry and headed for another palace, the Quinta de Regalera. The estate's owner was a wealthy businessman with a deep interest in spiritual philosophy and symbolism. He spared no expense in designing the gardens to reflect his beliefs. As we explored, we discovered hidden tunnels, secret grottos, We're in a cave. and beautiful fountains, all of which were designed to represent the journey of the human soul. One of the highlights was the initiation well which was designed to symbolize the concept of rebirth, with visitors descending into the depths of the earth and emerging into a new life. I decided that Quinta de Regalera would be my second place to paint while on this trip. But since the weather was being a little iffy and we were running out of time, I just decided to grab a reference photo for later. Once back home, I was able to reflect on the experience and take my time in painting. Throughout this whole trip, I wondered why I find travel such a huge source of inspiration. What is it about exploring that sparks my own creativity? The best way I can describe the feeling I get while traveling is the feeling of being alive. When I stood on the sun-drenched cliffs of Lagos, I remember how thrilling it was to look out in an ocean with no end in sight. The scent of salt in the air, the infectious and carefree laughter of the people around me, for a moment, I was lost in the sheer joy of being alive, of being in this place, of feeling the energy and possibility of the moment. When I strolled the centuries-old walls of the Castelo dos Moros, I remember how my first instinct was to run down the path to find all the hidden secrets that the castle held, like a kid playing a game of treasure hunt. My mind was able to set aside the usual worries of life and free to indulge in the luxury of wonder and imagination. So, I have discovered that it is the feeling of being alive, of imagination, of wonder, and energy, and possibility that fuels my creativity most. When I visit a place like the Quinta de Regalera, I can't help but feel inspired to paint my own perception and emotions of the experience. 
Thanks to my travels, I've learned that one of the catalysts for creativity is staying connected to that sense of energy and wonder. By breaking free from the routines of everyday life and immersing ourselves in new experiences, we can tap into a wellspring of inspiration and possibility. It's a reminder that we're capable of so much more than we think, and that the world is full of beauty and adventure waiting to be discovered. Next up, the vibrant city of Porto. Known for its picturesque streets, world-famous port wine, and stunning architecture. One of the most iconic landmarks of this historic city is the Claregos Tower, a magnificent Baroque structure that towers over the skyline and the destination of my final painting to commemorate this trip. We stepped into the Claregos Church and were instantly struck by the intricate details and stunning stonework that adorn the walls and ceilings a true testament to the creativity and skill of its designer, the Italian architect Niccolo Nassini. Built in the 18th century, it served as a symbol of the city's prosperity and growth during that time, and it is still an active church that serves as a place of worship for the local community today, making it not only a beautiful and historic landmark, but also an important part of Porto's present-day culture and identity. Then, it was time to climb the sketchy, wet, and narrow stairs to the top of the 75-meter tall tower. Despite being attacked by the wind, the views from the top of the tower were absolutely breathtaking. And on a clear day, you can see for miles in every direction. Porto's architecture was a welcome contrast to what I'm used to back in the United States. Then, on the way back down, we had the pleasure of being right beside the 49 bells when they went off to mark the time. The experience of climbing to the top of Clarigo's Tower gave me a newfound appreciation for the building, and I couldn't wait to get started on my painting of it. After completing my second painting of the Quinta de Rigalera, I realized how much I enjoyed experimenting with framing and omitting the sky. I found using the trees to frame and leaving some white space around the edge of the paper creates a much cleaner look. And then, with such a detailed building, I had to resist the temptation to go full Michelangelo and draw every nook and cranny. Avoiding detail is not one of my strengths, but I know that as an artist, it's important to learn when to simplify and interpret what's seen rather than just copying it like a photograph. I also realized after the first two paintings that I would need to be more precise with the colors to avoid that easy to fall into trap of muddying. So I focused on being intentional with my choices from the very beginning. I chose a light yellow for the highlights and mainly mixes of ultramarine blue and Payne's gray for the shadows. Now the building itself is more beige in person, but let's be real, beige is not exactly a party on paper. So I decided on pushing the yellow and blue to add more interest and depth to the painting. Another focus of mine was being more careful with the highlights. As we know, watercolor is not the most forgiving medium. And once you cover up those white highlights, it's not easy to go back. Overall, I feel as though I have learned so much from working on these three paintings, and it's quite exciting to be able to see the growth I've made from this medium already. I hope my process inspires you to try new things in your own art practice, and never stop learning and growing as an artist. As much as I was disappointed about not getting to paint on location, I really enjoyed creating these paintings and putting this video together to share my trip of Portugal with you. I also hope you might have found my experience with travel relatable and would love to hear your thoughts about travel and creativity in the comments. If you made it all the way to the end, you're a real one. Thank you all for watching. For those of you who may have connected with these paintings or would like to support my art, these three will be available in my shop as fine art prints. Link is below and thank you all for watching.